Big South Fork comprises 125,000 acres of rugged and magnificent forest on the Cumberland Plateau in Kentucky and Tennessee, as well as its namesake river, the free-flowing Big South Fork of the Cumberland River and all its tributaries. The park is the first to have been designated both a national river and a national recreation area. We were given this campsite in the Bandy Creek Campground as our group area for cooking and meeting, as well as seven additional sites for our own tents and vehicles. A modern washroom with hot and cold water and showers was just up the hill. And here are all of our tools. Our first two days, we worked on the Lytton Loop Trail, lopping and croaching vegetation, improving drainage, repairing damaged areas, rebuilding sections, fixing bridges, and removing a dozen fallen trees. Off the work we go. <laughs> We got the lopper guys too? <laughs> I'm a little bored. I'm a, you're a big bored. <laughs> With 500 miles of trails in the park and only a handful of seasonal trail crew workers, there's a lot of work to be done. And it can be years before the trail crew can get back to a particular trail. Here's a section of the rebuilt trail. The cardinal rule of hiking is not to cut switchbacks, but people do, and then we have to repair them. On previous projects, when in a designated wilderness area, we had to use hand tools, four-foot and six-foot two-man saws, to remove fallen trees. This was an arduous and time-consuming process. Since Big South Fork is not a wilderness area, the rangers were able to use chainsaws, making it a much quicker process. Lunch at a beautiful place like Fall Branch Falls is a fringe benefit of trail work. The John Litton farm is in a lovely setting and has some historic artifacts in the barn. On day three, we were driven to the Slave Falls Loop Trail based on reports of many trees down, and the reports were correct.
Sixty-foot-tall Slave Creek Falls got its name because escaping slaves would hide in its many alcoves. Needle Arch is this 30-foot long graceful thin sandstone arch. We decided it was a good place for our group photo. And here are Ronnie and Don, our hard-working Park Service trail crew leaders. These are a few of the massive root balls that destroyed the trail when trees were uprooted by high winds. Cherit Creek Lodge offers rustic lodging and meals to hikers and equestrians. You cannot drive here. <laughs> Here's the kicker, the far cabin. Yeah. That's what my grandma and grandpa used to Cool. Yeah. Really? Boy, right, so have you stayed there? Yeah. Uh-huh. Neat. A long time. It was way out of days ago. They saw uh -huh. it in the 50s or 60s. So. Uh-huh. See, I'm not off my rocker. <laughs> Those are the washrooms up there. <laughs> the arches are 103 and 70 feet high and 135 feet and 93 feet long, respectively. If the twin arches are regarded as parts of one landscape feature, then very few natural bridges in the world would equal their size. <laughs> 